Now, going to work examines practical tasks. Practical work is about using skills to make the things that people want. So quality is pretty important. Take buying clothes, for instance. I'm just making myself see, so I, I have a look to make sure it's okay before I buy it. I mean, if it's terribly, terribly cheap and it's going to be something disposable, like a rain mac or something like that, then I'm not too bothered. But if it's something that's going to last them, say, a season, then I'll look for the finishing and that sort of thing. It's more what it... Um you know what I like but it's sort of my mum she sort of she like you know she always looks for the quality more than what it's like sort of thing I look at the stitching I mean if I see a lot of loose ends then I then it really I sort of say oh no because that once it's gone through the wash I know that's... yeah if you just pull at the seams see how well they're put together like, yeah. a lot of dresses nowadays are made in fabrics that really don't wash or wear very well if you get them wet they're ruined Yesterday I bought a cardigan the other day and wore it once and the back it all came down at the top. So next time I went back to change it, I gave it a good pull to check that it was all right. It's pretty obvious that people do care about how well their clothes are made. To make good clothes at a reasonable price, today's clothing manufacturers need to be very big, modern and efficient. To make lots of clothes, you need lots of cloth. Laying out the cloth is Mandy's job. Mandy's been with the firm four years, mostly on this particular job. Her skill makes an awkward job look easy. And in this business, you don't make clothes one at a time. Cutting cloth, perhaps a hundred layers at a time, isn't a job for the faint-hearted. Hand cutting is the sort of job you work up to with experience. The cut pieces of cloth are sent out to other factories in the group, like this one, to be made up into finished garments. This is just one of several factories, and yet over 500 people work here. The workers are divided up into a number of smaller teams. Each team works on one production line and each production line works on one type of garment at a time. <laughs> we asked Carolyn if she'd done any practical things before joining the firm. I enjoyed needlework and I enjoyed art and design. I can do a lot of things at home, flower arranging, cookery, make most of my own clothes and most of my sister's clothes and doll's clothes for my younger sister. What sort of training do they receive? It's mainly knowing how to thread machines up and how to use them. And we, we did a, bits of sewing on bits of material to get used to them really and then put you on a style. Two weeks on one machine and two weeks on another. The watch over you Make sure you're getting it right. Once you get it right and you pick a bit of speed up, then the time you, and then you have to go at that time. And then we'll time you again maybe later on in the month when you're a bit faster. They are trained to sew the garments together skillfully, quickly and efficiently. But 
Speed isn't everything, as Alison knows well. You've got to be conscious all the time of how much you're cutting off. Whether you, if you get little tucks in, you have to unpick it straight away, you know, and do it again. And there's also a line pass on that line that helps you. She comes and checks your work and gives you it back if you're doing it wrong. When every job's done online, they send it to examining. They end up factoring, they examine it all. So that it can be passed. Well, if I get on and do a bundle, like slap happy, not caring how I do it, I know that I'm only going to get it back when I'm in the middle of trying to earn my money. Then all these repairs come back and you're sitting down doing them and you're in a mood and you're thinking, oh, I wish I'd have done that in this place. So there's no point me getting on and just doing them any old now. Got to take care. If I've no work on my machine and there's no other work on that line, another supervisor could come round for me to go onto another line and I could be using a different machine. Flexibility and speed are the keys to this operation, and not just for the firm's sake. The girls are on piecework. When they finish a bundle, they cut off a tag to show that they've done the work. That's how their wages are calculated. The working conditions here are good. Colleagues are friendly, and the piecework pay is reasonable. So most people here are fairly happy. That's good for them, and of course, that's good for the firm, whose products sell well in the shops. If you think the quality of clothes is important, then the quality of shoes is even more so. They get a lot more wear and tear. If you're going to buy them shoes, then I'll buy a proper pair of shoes, because otherwise I think you're wasting your money, basically. Yeah. I buy him leather shoes, but they still only last six or seven months, because obviously they use them as brakes for bicycles and things like that. Obviously, you're always going to try and get something that's going to last. I mean, you're not going to uh, try and get cheap stuff. Comfort. I don't buy them for very fashion. I buy them for comfort. Comfort or fashion, mothers and daughters don't always agree. Well, if she had her own way, she'd make me buy clocks. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> Definitely, especially when I'm with my daughter, I put her wife. Now, if I like the look of a shoe and it doesn't look as if it's going to last, I'll still buy it. <laughs> my mum will probably go mad. She'll say, oh, you only bought them two months ago. Look at them, look at them. But she doesn't always take my advice. <laughs> Luckily, most of us do listen to advice. Sometimes. The manufacture of shoes may look similar to making clothes. Lots of people on a production line. People like Claire. She's been with the firm for three years. The girls are sewing leather, making the uppers, the top part of the shoe. Away from the noise and bustle, we ask Claire about the training they receive. It's usually the supervisor puts you onto easy things, showing you what to do. And quite often on paper when you first start, you're sewing onto paper, just lines and things, and then they'll put you onto leather and then start doing a few patterns and just build up from there, really. You come down, you think you can use the sewing machine and then you get onto one of those in there and it's totally different. I mean, the faster speeds and sewing on leather is totally different to material. Anyway, you do, you have to work hard to really start making your money. It is hard at first. It comes easier. You know, you don't realise how fast you're going, really, you know, and you're really picking up a lot of speed. You have to really be careful what you're doing. You haven't to let your mind wander onto anything else. You really have to concentrate on your work. 
There's a certain way of doing everything. You've got to saw in the right direction along everything. And if you find you don't think it's quite right, you just go and ask the supervisors and they'll tell you whether it will get past OK. There isn't many that can only do one job. They like you to be able to do a few, and then if someone's absent, you can take over from somebody else. Well, I've worked on the flat machine and uh, the post machine, uh, the beading machine, which is the one that turns the top of the shoe over. Uh, I've wor worked in the shoe room on boxing the shoes up, and um, then the automatic machine that I'm on now. It mainly does the decorative stitching on the front of the shoes. It's good because every shoe is identical. If I went onto one of the other machines now, I'd be a lot slower than I ever was before because, well, I don't have to do anything really on that one. Just start it and stop it, and that's about it, really. Undoubtedly, for some jobs, it is the sewing machine of the future. Claire's job isn't so much working it as telling it what to do, programming it. I'll do all the programming. Because we've only just got that machine, I've only been working on it a fortnight. I can't do that yet, but we've got the man who fetched the machine in. He's coming down this week and showing me what to do on it, and then I'll do all the programming. Automatic computer control machines are going to become more common and replace some traditional skills. They're certainly going to change lots of jobs. But funnily enough, not this one, cutting out the leather. This job is all about judgment, and that's something that people are much better at than computers. The other part of the factory is known as the closing room. That's where the complete shoe is put together. Why did Brian come into this type of work? Yeah, well, I wanted to be a mechanic or something like that, uh, but there's no jobs going at all. I mean, at the Vickers shipbuilding, at that, I tried to get in there, but there was very, you know, no vacancies at all for anything, really. So, just this job come up and uh, me and my mate started at the same uh, week. So we took it. Most of them are married, you know, working on the production line. Well, uh, they're struggling, you know, at the moment to get a decent wage. Well, uh, to me, you know, the wage is not so bad. Because I started on a low wage and the threw was in at the deep end. You know, when the, so many went, left this spot and uh, so I just started from there. Then I ended up, you know, getting double my wage, like, to you've got to work for it, like, now. In the past, you weren't really flogged, you know. But uh, at the moment, you've got to, you know, if you want to earn some money, you've got to really go. You get that with, you know, time and practice. And then you get used to the machine and how to alter it, you know, and a few shortcuts and things like that, you know. And then after a bit, you just, you just feel flowing, you know, you just get a rhythm going. And that's it, you know. You've got to look at that all the time, because there's always someone further up the line checking you that you're doing the job right. And that there's no mistakes made, because if you, because you might end up making a 12 pair of rejects, which are no good, you know. Just for a staff little mark or something on the upper. Like all jobs in this factory, you know, it's only shoemaking, you're just a monotonous job all the time, you know. But, uh, like, some jobs are really boring, but, well, mine's not, well, it's boring, yeah, in a way, but it's not so bad because you're always changing and swapping and, you know, making sure that everything's, uh, you know, ticking over, right? Sport and leisure industries are growing all the time, and that means more work producing the equipment people need. Rackets, for instance. In this long-established business, it's the traditional skills that are important. After all, most rackets are still made from the traditional material, wood. You need a good eye and lots of experience to work wood successfully, because it's a natural material and so it's not perfect. Did you know that rackets are made from strips of wood? The strips are glued, 
then pulled into the shape we recognize. You usually talk from the person like who you're taken over from and he sort of stays with you for a couple of weeks and then you sort of build yourself up to doing the job properly which takes say like a month. It's pretty difficult in fact. I think it's one of the hardest ones in this factory. You can only go at a certain speed, but if you do make mistakes, you're soon told. You've got people sort of checking over your work when it goes through another department. So if you've done it wrong, then it comes back to you. And then you're told either to slow down or get it right. I know they do make quality wreckage. I don't actually stop them in the middle of the day and think about it. You know? Although it's a factory job, it's not on a say like production line. So it's, you can space yourself out during the day, you know, so you make it easier. Or if you go slow, you make it harder for yourself, you know, not that you want to, but it's just the way you do it in the day. To make sure that the finished rackets are up to the mark, quality checks are common right through the factory. Quality checks are particularly important when the manufacturing process involves so many different people and so many different operations. Each operation has to be done to the highest possible standard. No machines to guide you here. Jobs like this call for the very highest standards of skill. The sanded frames then go for polishing and painting before ending up here in the stringing room. Every single racket is strung by hand. It will be a very long time before a machine could successfully do a job like this. After six years in the job, Margaret can look back to when she first started. I thought I'd never do it because it looked very complicated. You know, that weaving in and out and everything. But it just comes to you. Well, you start with an empty racket and then, like, the supervisor taught me how to put what they call the main in. And then you pull that up on your machine. So you've got lines in the racket. And then she taught me how to weave it all through. So then that makes you cross, you see, and then you finish at the end and you've got your strung racket. And once you've learnt the basic stringing, it just seems to come, you know, your speed comes. But once you've got that certain speed, after a while you don't seem to be able to get any faster. And it's interesting that many people do get something else out of this type of work. I really like my job because you've started with something that's really nothing, and once you've strung it, it's a squash racket that someone's going to buy and go play with, and hopefully last them a long time. <laughs>